the first two uh, uh, interviews that I shared with you, I'm very interested in uh, 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 the, uh, writing Africa and writing by Africans and especially uh, the question of language and uh, translation to maximize the, the reach of one's writing. Yes. And you, uh, 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 you are someone that uh, we have interacted a lot. You have been uh, uh, foremost uh, on, 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 on this issue of uh, uh, promoting uh, 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 literature uh, that is accessible to the African uh, uh, people and especially written in a language that is accessible. You, yeah. you are, uh, your mastery of English, French and Pidgin English uh, is uh, outstanding. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm humbled, I'm humbled, bro. I'm very humbled. Yes, I, I thought that uh, conversation would not be complete without reaching out to you uh, to have your opinion. Okay. Uh, I, I, but as I, I normally do, we start with you uh, introducing yourself beyond me saying that I'm, I'm speaking with uh, Dr. Uh, Peter Bakunta, yeah. uh, a Cameroonian who has worked uh, extensively on diff in different parts of Africa, especially here in South Africa, and is currently in the U.S. Yeah. So you take over from that uh, uh, there and introduce yourself, and we continue accordingly. Okay, thank you very much, Prof. I, I, again, like I said, it's a big honor for me to uh, to be able to interact with you this this uh, this this morning on my side and this afternoon your side uh, on a topic that I hold very dear, that is very close to my heart. And that is uh, that is writing in in pigeon in pigeon English and uh, and other I've written in come from Glass, but we're going to talk about that as well. But uh, again, I'm Peter Vacunta. Uh, very quickly, I uh, I hail from Cameroon, of course, and I did work at the Presidency of the Republic for years before moving to South Africa, where I taught uh, first of all at high school and then at the University at uh, of South of South Africa, UNISA in Pretoria. And then I came to the United States in 2001, and I've been in academia. I did my doctorate at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And then from there, I've been teaching in, for a number of institutions, including the University of Wisconsin itself, and then the, the University of Indianapolis, uh, the Defense Language Institute, uh, where I'm currently a professor of languages and cultures. Uh, and like you said, Prof, I've, uh, I've, uh, I've tried to be prolific. I mean, what is the what is the use of a mind if it is if it is not productive? I've been I've been very very active in and in academia, trying to to write books uh, in French, English, and uh, Pigeon English as well as come from where. Yes, uh, could you uh, just uh, introduce maybe those who are listening to us uh, to some of your writings, uh, especially those. Uh, that uh, uh, speak to the theme of the day, uh, uh, both speaking English and come uh, Franklin, which is a combination of uh, of of of, of uh, indigenous languages and uh, 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 French and English as uh, uh, languages uh, with a European uh, origin. That's that's right, Prof. Yeah, I've written. Um, let's 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 start with uh, let's start with pigeon. I've written. I do have uh, collections of short stories in in Pigeon English. I think the one that comes to mind real quick is uh, uh, Tori Suite for Cameroon Pigeon English. Uh, there's uh, also a, a number of uh, poetry collections that I have, uh, Come Talk and other stories from the cradle. I have, um, what do I have? I, I tend to forget all those things. Now. I do have uh, uh, Manjunga Talk. Manjunga Talk is, uh, is another one that I wrote in Pigeon English. So we have we have that we have um, what do I have what do I have again I do have uh, I have to have titles in um, in yes, in yes. come from like, any, any people who are interested can can get all the I'm all I'm, I'm on Amazon. Uh, yes, and, and I do remember you also have uh, 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 a book of, of tribute uh, to uh, uh, Lapiro de Mbanga, the yes. Cameroonian, uh, late Cameroonian musician who uh, distinguished himself in the, uh, 
Uh, play uh, in, in, precisely in Camp Franklin. Absolutely, yes, yes, bro. When uh, when pa when La Piro pass, uh, peace be upon him. Uh, we we uh, you, uh, we you and I decided we should. Uh, you, I mean, you asked me if I could produce a work on him. I, of course, I did a, a big volume on him. Uh, I think it's yeah. I said I titled. I think it's a tribute to a Cameroonian icon. Uh, you know that I devoted to La Piro de Banga. La Piro de Banga did not create Camp Franklin, but he was one of the musicians. One of the few musicians on the Cameroonian musical front that really utilized that uh, not just to, uh, you know, connect himself to the to the rank and file, but also to speak, to tell the truth to power. He criticized BS government very vehemently in his in his songs uh, that were composed in you know principally in uh, in Confrongle. Yeah, so I have that uh, for Confrongle. I do have uh, Speak Camp Franglais pour un renouveau angolais, and I have uh, Recoim pour, le, pour, pour Angola en Camp Franglais. Uh, they, they are all uh, very satirical works, and uh, I, do, I wanted to get uh, you know in, in, con in contact with uh, uh, with the drunken file, with the people that really matter, and that is the people on the ground there. Yes, exactly. Uh, which brings me to my main question: Why do you think it is important? for you to write in pidgin english and in come from franglais mm. when uh, uh, the, the, the the normal expectation would be that somebody who is so accomplished so articulate in french and english would not want to indulge in the impurities that might be associated with dirtying the french language or dirtying the english language well, Prof, I, I like the I like your choice of words, the impurities, and we can talk about that for five hours. Unfortunately, we don't have five hours to talk about the, ling the linguistic impurities of Cameroon, which I don't I don't consider impurities at all. In fact, they are riches; they are it's enrichment. Uh, but, Prof, let me let me let me underscore, let me respond to your question very briefly. One, of course, like you said, I am very proficient in English and French. I have written in both languages. I have publications in both languages. But why do I? Why did I choose to write in in, uh, in pidgin English? Number one, there are many many reasons I can give you. Number one is that of uh, you know rescuing a dying culture. And what is this dying culture? Is in the English the pidgin the culture of the pidgin pidginophones? Okay, I don't know if I'm creating this word. Pidginophones are people who speak pidgin English. In Cameroon, for instance, for instance, if you look at the, the one language, the one language that unifies. People across social strata, it is pidgin English. Research has been done on that. People in Bangwana, uh, Menang, and many people, Achimbe, Todd, they've written, they've written uh, about the status of pidgin English in Cameroon, and they have, they have they've illustrated through profound research that this is the only language that cuts across social strata. Pidgin English connects an educated Cameroonian to a, an educated Cameroonian. It connects a francophone Cameroonian to an anglophone Cameroonian. It connects the, the educated to the educated. It connects the uneducated to the educated, and so on and so forth. So that's my prim primordial reason for choosing to write in Confronga, to rescue this dying culture, to rescue this dying language. Well, number two, I wanted to talk to the people that matter to me, and I want to underscore that. Some people look at Vakunta and say, but he's an intellectual, so why does he care about the rank and file? Well, I'm the rank and file as well. Because if you look at my origins, I come from the rank and file. Uh, and so you never forget your history. And so I want to talk to my people. And therefore, the language that they better, the only language that is spoken and understood, Professor Nyamjo, by Cameroonians who never went to school is pidgin. They, they master pidgin. Okay? So you, I, when I write in pidgin English, I'm talking, I want to send the message to the people, and of course, you know that you probably know from my writings that I'm also a very, I'm also a, one of the writers that speak truth to power, and I and I speak that without any fear of consequences. And so, if I have to mobilize people, if I have to mobilize the masses today to take a decisive action in Cameroon, I'm not going to speak to them in French. I'm not going to speak to them in English. I'm going to talk to them in, in a language they, un, they better understand, and that's speaking. The third thing, Prof, is also the the question of um, the question of uh, availability of of knowledge to to people across the world. I mean, again, pidgin is not spoken just on just in Cameroon, in Cameroon, and people need to know that. 
people didn't know that Nigerians read my works. Who speak English? They read my works and they understand it. When I, I Ghanaians who speak English read my works and they understand it. And so I'm not just being local. I'm not just being local. I'm also even going continental, if not to say global, because when I read, when I write in pidgin English, I am expanding my market. And that's important for people to understand that there's also the question of market marketing or the, 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 the consumer public. Who is the, who is the end product? Who is the end consumer? The ultimate consumer of my works is Africa. It's not just Cambridge, it's Africa. And Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, it, uh, this uh, conversation coincides with uh, current uh, uh, resurgence in calls for uh, decolonization and uh, relevance. Relevance uh, of uh, um, uh, by academics uh, and the research relevance of the African writer to the people in Africa and uh, relevance uh, 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 of the languages of instruction. Mm -hmm. So I would imagine that uh, your choice of writing in pidgin English uh, 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 would find resonance with current uh, uh, clamors for decolonization. Uh, any comment from you? Oh yes, bro. I mean, um, that's that's a that's a that's a very weighty question there. Now let let me say this real re real quick. Um, by cho choosing to write in pidgin English, I'm not just fighting the the what they call the the the, un the decolonization process in in the post colony. I'm also fighting. I'm just contributing very, very, very strongly to the local, the local situation in Cameroon. Because if you look at the look at the Ambazonian genocide that's going on, the Ambazonian revolution is going on in Cameroon today, Prof. The genesis, and I've written tons of things about that. The genesis of that conflict is is language. They may talk about the legal process, you know, the 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 the, the, the English, the English common law, and the Francophone Napoleonic uh, law. The language, the problem is, the, the kernel of that problem is language. How is language used in the legal system in Cameroon? How is language used in the educational system in Cameroon? How is language used in training our armed forces in Cameroon, the gendarmerie, and so on and so forth. So I'm fighting, number one, a war that is that nobody, I call it an elephant in the house. Nobody wants to talk about the language problem in Afri in Cameroon because it's the, it's the, it's the lion in the house, uh, the, uh, the elephant in the house, I meant to say. So that's the one thing. Number two is the whole decolonization process. When the colonial guys came, uh, not even the colonial people, they, this whole thing prof, started with the Portuguese traders coming to Cameroon 500 years ago. And they, they started trading with people across the linguistic boundaries in Cameroon. And of course, uh, as they crisscross across linguistic borders, then Pigeon became the, the, out, the outcome. And so... Again, the colonial guys came in 1916. As you know, the Germans came into Cameroon in 1916. And then the, the whole language thing became even more complicated. So and at what point are we going to stop being linguistic slaves to the ex-colonizers? That's my question. In fact, Prof, I wrote an article that I'm sure you've probably read that. If not, I will refer you to that one. It's titled The, the Status of uh, Pidgin English in the Cameroonian Tower of Babel. It's published by... Um, by uh, uh, the, the journal in the in the in Cambridge at, at Cambridge University, uh, the in English Today. I'm sure you know about that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And in that in that article, I'm arguing vehemently for the adoption of Pidgin English as a national language in Cameroon, in addition to French and English, because of all the reasons that I've given you, Pidgin is the number one language that cuts across boundaries in Cameroon. So. To decolonize a people, you got to begin with your language. So I'm fighting that war in, you know, I'm fighting that war myself during using my writing. Um, so you have to first of all make sure you give people give the people their language back. And like we like any language, I'm a linguist. Any language knows that language carries a culture, language carries a worldview, language carries a people's identity. And so if you take my language away, you've destroyed me. And that's the war I'm fighting in Cameroon and on the global scene, because you cannot, you cannot talk about the de decolonizing Africa. And again, as a liter literary uh, scholar as well, there are books on that. There are books on the decolonizing the African literature by the Chimwe 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 the Nigerian guy. 
And so yes. we have to fight that. And I think that I'm not, my battle is not a, it's not a, it's not a light battle because I know that on the campus of a university in Cameroon, like the University of Boya is very notorious for that. They, they are gunning for the abolition of English. When I look at things like that, Professor Nyamjo, I just laugh because you know what? It's infantile for somebody to sit in his office and think that he can decree the demise of a language. That's, that's just, that's yeah, mind boggling. Uh, pigeon English has spoken on campus or it, something to that effect. Exactly. In, and yeah. so, yes, yeah, so I think that what I'm doing here, bro, people may look at it and say, but this, what is wrong with this guy? Why is he writing in pigeon English? Well, I'm fighting a bigger battle that people who are narrow minded may not even see because the battle, look, assimilation, okay? The French people came with assimilation. And what did the people like Aimé Césaire do? They came up with negritude. Exactly. And you, you, know, you know about it, Prof. I'm not teaching you anything yes, new. Yes, yes, negritude yes, yes. was a counter, was a counter, was a counter movement against the, uh, the French assimilationist policy. And in the Anglophone the domain, what, what happened? I think uh, people like Shoinka, they're not talking about uh, uh, the African personality. And then Padlele of South Africa talking about the African personality and so on and so forth. So these movements yeah. are, are gradually taking root and uh, we have to fight it on, on all fronts, I would say. Yeah, does it surprise you that you sound very much like uh, a lone voice uh, in view of, of the fact that uh, in Cameroon, uh, a pigeon is not taught in any of the state universities, uh, to the best of my knowledge. And uh, as you rightly uh, indicated uh, uh, just now, uh, instead there is a, a systematic campaign to uh, dissuade people from speaking English on university campuses. Yeah, it surprises me. Probably it doesn't surprise. It doesn't surprise me a, lo a whole lot. I know there are people who are on my bandwagon. I mean, you are one of them. You may you may not even agree, but you, your book, uh, the, I think, uh, uh, Stories from Abakwa, is, is part of it. Is A lot of it is in Pidgin English. Yeah, so, absolutely. yeah, I do have people who are on board with me. Uh, and, of course, the question, to answer your question, is very, very te technically. I think this whole thing is, it borders on our failed language policy in Cameroon. As far as I know, as far as my readings take me, Prof, um, there is no effective language policy in Cameroon that, that touches on the educational system. In fact, if, if somebody had to ask me, I, I would say we need to begin to talk about an African or an, a Cameroonian educational curriculum. We need to begin to reconceptualize our educational, our uh, curricular uh, paradigms and include languages like pidgin because without pidgin you are leaving out a significant chunk of the of the population and so well the powers that be in the educational domain the jack farming dongos and and, and, and all, and all the rest of them they will learn belatedly that this is not a fight they're going to win they're going to fail ultimately because you cannot you cannot deprive people of the language so we need to think about how we're going to make uh pidgin english one of the languages in our curriculum, in your curriculum, Von Lund, Bernard Von Lund talked about it. Tadaju, Tadaju yeah. talked about it. They've come up with Tadaju in particular. In particular, I think he he passed on. Peace be upon him. He passed on, but he before he passed, he was my professor at the Adam Um, and he talked about a trilingual, a trilingual educational policy for Cameroon. And what does that include? He is speak. He was speaking my language. In, come up with, a, with an educational uh, curriculum that includes French, English, and a neutral language. And if you think about a neutral, a cultural, a culturally neutral language in Cameroon, Prof, it is Pidgin English because yeah. Pidgin English is neutral. It does you don't link Pidgin English to a, a tribe or an ethnic group in Cameroon. It is a neutral language because it cuts a co across linguistic borders in Cameroon. And I've we, by the way, we're going to talk about that, but I think we have five varieties of pigeon in Cameroon. We can get to that. Yes. Five of yes. them. And so, if, if um, I know it's a question of delay. It's a delay tactic, but I think that ultimately we will prevail because uh, the language, the message that is going out of, out, it is coming from us, people like us who, 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 who know stuff about linguistics and who know stuff yeah. about, about uh, uh, a, a curriculum. I am a curriculum. I'm also a, 
One of my masters in the United States is curriculum, uh, curriculum and instruction. And so when we talk to people, I believe they should listen because <laughs> this world is about the cross-pollination of ideas, probably. You can't just sit there in Yaoundé or Boya and think that you're going to, you're going to stop the train. In a, there's somebody who wrote a book. I'm sure you know him. Uh, oh, my God. Those names. But the title of the book is You Cannot Stop a Moving Train. You, no, you cannot be neutral on a moving train. This, ling this linguistic train is moving. And regardless of what, what the folks down there are doing to, to stop us from, from, from becoming linguistically liberated, we are going to be liberated. And so let's, yeah. let's reconceptualize our, voca our curriculum. Let's Absolutely. look at our constitution. I happen to be, <laughs> you know, I wear several hats, probably. I happen to be one of the translators at the presidency of the Republic of Cameroon that worked on the 1991, uh, is it 1994 uh, Cameroon uh, constitution? That yeah. clearly states in Article Three that the official languages of Cameroon and, and of Cameroon would be English and French, having an equal status, and then that the priority will be given to indigenous languages. I emphasis is emphasis mine, but up to up to today, what has happened to the indigenous languages? Prop, they've been they've been relegated to the background, and so we need to fight that battle. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and what would imagine that anybody with some uh, commitment to national unity uh, in Cameroon would uh, embrace immediately or see the, uh, the, the, the richness or, uh, 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 in what you are proposing. Mm -hmm. First, I'm not speaking English, but then even uh, the next step, uh, uh, something that you have uh, uh, argued strongly for is uh, come from there. Mm -hmm. uh, the country that uh, uh, has indigenous or endogenous African languages as well as French and English. Yeah. Uh, to, to make a case for Cam Franglais would be to speak in favor of uh, a, a common uh, ground, uh, linguistically speaking, yes. or a crossroads, a, a productive crossroads yeah. uh, 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 of, 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 of uh, 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 speaking linguistically. Yeah. Then uh, I'm surprised that uh, Cam Franglais uh, seems to be frowned upon uh, uh, and to be seen as a, 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 a distraction rather than something to actively promote in the interest of uh, nation building in Cameroon as we have it today. Yeah. Uh, what, uh, what, 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 what would you have to add uh, to, to that? Uh, no, Prof, uh, it's, we're talking, yeah, yeah. yeah we, we're saying the same thing here because what is Kam Franglais? Kam Franglais is a hybrid language that was created, uh, you know, from, from English and French and, and a few indigenous languages. If you know the, you know, if you know the, the anatomy of Kam Franglais, it's not just English and French. Some people think it's just English and French. No, there's a lot of uh, borrowed, uh, you know, lexic lexical items from, uh, from, uh, from, from local language. Wolowas, for example, is not a French word. Wolowas, which means uh, whore, uh, sapak. All the, there are tons of them in there. They all like, from Kam Franglais words. So, Again, Prof, I think to respond to your question very briefly, it is the same mentality. What is what is hampering people? What is preventing people? Uh, when I say people, I mean the powers that be in Cameroon from recognizing Cam Franglais as a language that should be should be utilized to uh, you know resolve uh, you know regional uh, regional pro uh, problems is 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 the same disdain they have for Pigeon English because Cam Franglais is a hybrid language as well. It's, it has not attained the level of a creolized language like uh, like pidgin. Pidgin is clearly a creole in Cameroon. In fact, when people ask me on international scene, what do you speak other than your mother tongue? I say I speak uh, Cameroonian creole. What is that? Well, Cameroonian creole is pidgin. And then, of course, we can go into a whole dialogue about that. So, Cam Franglais is 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 you know, it's akin to pidgin with this, with a little caveat that Cam Franglais is was a, it was a, I call it a cult language. Cult in the sense that it was a language that was created by the youngsters in order to be able to speak, uh, you know, uh, about things that they don't want elders and law enforcement officers to, to get wind of. For example, they talk about drug, drug, drug peddling. They talk about drug consumption. They talk about prostitution. They talk about uh, stealing and so on and so forth using come from there. So it's a, it's a veiled language. And therefore, because it was veiled, it was, it was uh, ostracized by so-called linguistic purists 
in Cameroon. I say so-called. I, I say that with a lot of emphasis because they are so-called. And um, so Come From Glee has suffered the misfortune of being relegated to the linguistic uh, background because it is attributed to, it's associated with, uh, with the banditry, it's associated with misconduct, it's associated with mischief and so on and so forth. But having said that, Prof, again, I want to underscore, and that's why I write in Come From Glee. I have two books in Come From Glee. I have, uh, a, I have a theoretical book. You are to blame for that, Prof. You know what I mean. I have a book on... <laughs> on the translation of uh, the theory and practice of translating Kung Fu Anglais. So scholars are doing work. Scholars are doing work on Kung Fu Anglais. Kung Fu Anglais, to me, is uh, almost the same as our pidgin on the other side of the Mongo. And so if we want to talk about a linguistic a richness, we should not be trying to kill languages. We should promote languages. And let me say one thing real quick, Prof. For people who don't understand the linguistic configuration of Africa, Kung Fu Anglais, it's not yeah. just in Cameroon. We have the same thing in uh, in North Africa, Nushi. If you talk to Professor to Doctor Wangui Waguri, she, she should be able to tell talk to you about uh, about uh, Sheng S H S H E N G in uh, in Nairobi. Sorry, in uh, in Kenya, I meant to say it's a mix. It's a mixed language between English and Swahili. Uh, Nushi is the same. Is a, is the sister language of Kong Franglais in in Cote d'Ivoire. They speak the same, the same mixture that we have in Cameroon, but they don't they don't call it come from Blair because it's not Cameroon. They call it Nushi. Now, if you go to South Africa, where you are, Prof, you probably don't know. Probably you may not know this, but I'm just letting you know that there's something. There are two there are two lingua francas in in uh, South Africa that are very akin to come from Blair. One, uh, Tutital. If you know the Tutital, yes, is uh, it's yes, the Tuti. Yes, yes, yes. So T is is the same like our our you know uh, you know street guys in Cameroon. So they have a language that they have created called Tutita. There's another one, a language spoken in uh, in the mines, in the gold in the gold mines. On the, in, it's called uh, Fanagalo. If you look that up, you get Fanagalo is another language in South Africa that is very akin to our pitch, our come from English. So and in Canada, what do they speak, bro? They speak come uh, from. Uh, Can franglais, C A N franglais. We have come franglais, which is Cameroon pidgin, uh, Cameroon French English, and then the Canadians have can franglais, which is Canadian uh, French English. So, <laughs> where are we going? Where are these people? Where where, where are we going to go with this whole song, this whole choir about let's kill, let's kill? Um, you know, I call them uh, continental lingua francas, uh, pidgin. You know, come franglais. Nushi, Fanagalo, Shang, and all that. They are, in fact, I'm trying to see if I can write a book on that problem. Continental lingua francas, are a, they are a wealth. They are not, they're not a distraction. They are not, they don't impoverish us. They don't, they don't subtract anything from us. In fact, we get richer. There's a whole lot of research out there that says that the more languages you speak, the more, the, 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 the quicker you are at analyzing global phenomena and uh, you and i are probably examples i mean we don't we're not dull, we're not we're not do, do less productive because we speak many languages yes uh, and uh, i think on that uh, note I, i just thought maybe uh, to conclude uh, i would like you uh, to send out uh, two messages one first for your readers who read you in pidgin english and who read you in come franklin yeah and the second Uh, uh, to others out there who are grappling with the same issues like you, how to represent uh, or to write in a manner that is accessible to the African uh, masses, to the people that matter, to those who uh, share uh, a, a common uh, experience of the world mm -hmm. as you. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so first, just, just take them as, as you see Yeah, th thank you, Prof. That's, thank you for this opportunity. In fact, if I had one thing to to say to people who are pigeonophones uh, on the global scene, including, of course, Africa, I would say that uh, you they have to, they should embrace the, this language because this language is a tool of is a tool for decolonization. It is a language that will, if I were to propose something to the AU, the African Union, other than Swahili, I, should, they, I think they, they should also consider. You should consider pigeon. Number two, for Cameroonians uh, in, in Cameroon, for readers in Cameroon, in Cameroon, 
they should be aware of the fact that pigeon has, is, has a, a, about five tentacles in camera. We have the engraffed pigeon, we have the, uh, the, 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 the littoral pigeon, we have the pigeon of the, uh, the north, which is the fufu, the, 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 fu, the pigeon spoken by the, the Fulanis in the north. We have, uh, I think, sa the sour pigeon, because if you look at it, sour west pigeon is not the same as my west pigeon. And then lastly, we have, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the pigeon of the Bible. So th those are the five categories. Uh, what I would tell them is, you know, stick to your pigeon language. Fight the good fight against government, government, uh, you know, government dictatorship, linguistic dictatorship, I meant to say. Fight it, keep using it, and uh, make sure that you are, you are not, uh, you know, uh, being dragged into this whole fallacy of pidgin is an inferior language, pidgin is a language that should be discarded, and pidgin is, pidgin, pidgin, um, you know, uh, makes you not speak proper English. I think, again, like I said, I, you and I are good examples. I don't think we are deficient in, in writing and speaking standard English because we speak uh, pidgin. So that's a fallacy that I would like my readers to, to debunk. Number two, the come from Anglais issue, Prof. Uh, I, would tell my, I would tell my readers who are reading me in come from Anglais that, uh, you know, come from Anglais is, has come to stay. Regardless of what the policymakers are dreaming about, they're going to fail because come from Anglais is not a con it's not a Cameroonian issue, it's a continental, if not a global issue. And they should hold tight to it, try to see themselves, identify themselves, their cultures, their worldviews, and their likes and dislikes inside come from there because that language represents them. It represents the masses and the people that are going to overthrow the people, the, those, those leeches in power, and not people who speak Oxford English, that the people that speak come from there and pidgin, because that's a language that unifies the, the whole country, and they should hang on to that. Now, for people who are struggling like me, writing in a language that has limited readership and that is being frowned upon by the so-called linguistic purists, and there are many of them out there, they should, they should stick to their guns. That's my message, that no victory has ever come easily. They got to be, be able to stick to their guns and continue to write in the language and continue to promote languages by making by uh, by engaging in book uh, book uh, book readings, you know, organize activities in in Confranglais and in and, uh, and and pidgin English. Make sure that your books are read by people. Advertise yourself. Talk about it in Jangi houses. Go to Tontins and talk about your books. To go to we have I think prof, correct me if I'm wrong. We have about four or five radio houses in Cameroon that are in pidgin. There's one in Southwest, one in Douala, one in Bamenda, I think one in Yaoundé, Radio Sianto, and so on and so forth. This is the, in, here in the West, I don't know what's going on in Africa, we have book reviews that are on radio, on TV, okay? Like Vakunta writes a book uh, about Come From There. Somebody who wants to, you know, who wants to buy my, who always wants to support me, who is a literary critic, will take, will do a review and go to the TV and read it out. And that's how people that's how people know that there's somebody out there who is fighting the good fight against linguistic. I, w I want to use a word that I'm very fond of. I'm sure you know that linguicide. <laughs> it's linguistic genocide. That's what that's what I we are fighting for. So that that was my, my brief message to the, to the to the to the public, Prof. No, thank you so much, uh, Peter, for making yourself available to share your experience. You're, you're welcome. And uh, your current uh, project. With, with, with uh, those who take these issues uh, very seriously. Yeah, you're welcome, Prof. It's my, always my pleasure to talk with you, as you know. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Uh, I, I will stop just very briefly. Uh, could you send me a photo uh, and, and a bio to go with, with, with this interview? Yes, I will. I will. Uh, a photo.